Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I'm reviewing the third Sonoff Zigbee sensor. This is the Sonoff temperature and humidity sensor. It is the SNZB02. This sensor is a relatively new device and it is part of the Sonoff Zigbee sensor ranges. We have already reviewed a couple of sensors and there are a few more to be reviewed in the near future as well. But the idea with this one is that you have this, you know, fairly small sensor that you can you know, sticky tape onto your wall or whatever surface where you want to measure temperature. And then you would use the EV-Link application to create separate scenes how this unit would control some other Sonoff unit. For example, a Sonoff Basic, which is going to control a fan, for example, to regulate the temperature or humidity in the room. Obviously, this device in itself is not going to control anything, so you would need other devices to control fans, uh, let's say furnaces, boilers, heat pumps, whatever. This is just the, to measure the temperature. And because it's battery operated, it's very really easy to place it anywhere. You can stick it on a surface, you can just leave it something like this, and then maybe even move around the house. Maybe your upstairs room are always a little bit colder, so it makes sense to use this sensor upstairs to control the furnace which heats our entire house. And besides the fact that this is only a sensor, so it requires a, another son of device to actuate anything, it also requires a Zigbee bridge, because all Zigbee devices communicate to the Zigbee bridge, and that the Zigbee bridge communicates uh, over the internet with the other son of uh, devices. And I've already covered what the Zigbee bridge is, how you can set it up and how you can pair devices with that. So if you are new to this whole Zigbee system, that I would recommend that you watch that video first and then you will understand how to set this unit up. What I'm going to be covering in this video is, well, of course, how this device looks like and then how you can create various scenes in the EV-Link application so this device can control other son of devices. The son of uh, Zigbee temperature and humidity sensor is not a complicated device. As you can see, it's more like a rectangular shape with two of the opposing sides beveled. We have some vent holes on the top. We also have this temperature logo embossed on the front cover. We have a button on the button, which uh, as far as I can tell, it's, it can only be used to start a pairing process. So you long press it and then, then you can start the pairing. I also tried to see if this button can be used to manually send a measurement, but it appears not to be the case. So it looks like that this device is most probably sleep most of the time, uh, mostly to conserve battery power. And then it wakes up maybe once a minute or every 30 seconds. It takes a measurement and it sends it over to Zigbee and then it goes back to sleep and that operation doesn't seem to be uh, influenced by the by this button so I think this button is only for pairing other than that you won't be able to use it and there is no way I could find out to influence the metering interval of this device but I think for you know for temperature sensor is probably fine even five minutes would be fine and there are no contact surfaces on this device so you won't be able to easily use this to measure, for example, fluids or the temperature of other bodies because it, it is really designed to measure air temperature and that's what the vents are for. So it, it's sort of like the ambient temperature which gets in, gets measured and that's how this device works. So, so I would say uh, besides measuring room temperature and humidity, I don't think this device can be used for many other purposes. There is a small slot in the housing and if you use a screwdriver you can pop off the back and that reveals the battery and this unit is operated by a CR2450 coin cell. The unboxing of this device is going to be fairly easy. As you can see you are getting everything in this orange box like all Zigbee devices this also comes in an orange color. Uh, the, I've already talked about the device itself. You are getting a QC leaflet and you're also getting a double-sided sticky tape and the idea is that you stick it on a wall or whatever surface where you want to measure or you can just leave it standing on any surface if you like. And you are also getting a small multi-language instruction leaflet which talks about the basics such as how to uh, remove the tab from the battery, how you can get into pairing mode and, and then that's pretty much it. We are back at my test board again and you can see the Zigbee temperature and the humidity sensor here. I also have the motion sensor from the previous video and this is the Zigbee bridge these units communicate with. And I also have the 4CH here and I think I'm going to use for testing purposes now. If you look at the app, you can see it's, uh, we are in my living room where most of the devices are and you see the Zigbee temperature and humidity sensor up here. 
and it well it doesn't really do much I mean this is a sensor so it tells you the temperature and the humidity it's not really 27 degrees in my room but I was just holding this uh, unit uh, when I recorded the first uh, part of this video so this is probably it's uh, it's a little bit warmer and it needs a little bit of uh, time to cool down as I mentioned before so far I haven't really found any information on how frequently this device updates the temperature and uh, humidity nor what sort of sensors it uses so I can't really tell how accurate these readings are if we go into the device settings by clicking on the three dots then we can see that the only thing we can do is we can change the name of the device and we can assign it to a location which means we can just move it around in between rooms so if you decide to move this temperature sensor into a different room you can come to the assigned location and you can just uh, move it into a different room or actually e now supports multiple homes as well so you can move it to a different home and that's pretty much it so it doesn't show you a log it doesn't have a graph it just shows you the current temperature and humidity as I said before, this temperature and humidity sensor doesn't really do anything in itself. After all, this is just a sensor. So you need another sort of device that it can control. And I'm going to use this 4CH. And I think I'm going to use channel 4 of this device. So we can use the sensor to control the output of this device. And for that, we need to set up some scenes. So I come to the scenes and I click on the plus button. And I say, add on triggers, smart device and then Zigbee temperature sensor and we have now two options we can set up a temperature threshold or a humidity threshold when this device is going to actuate something so let's set up a scene for our temperature and we have two options here we can set a minimum and a maximum temperature so let's say if the temperature is above I don't know let's say five degrees and below let's say 25 degrees then this unit should do something so i'm just going to leave temperature for the time being but you can set humidity as well then you want some action so i'm clicking on add smart device 4ch channel 4 and i'm going to turn it on and i'm going to save here as well and i'm just going to give it the name to gold so this is a scene which is going to turn on when the temperature basically drops below 25 degrees and I can set up another scene as well so add smart device Zigbee temperature also the temperature and I'm probably going to say that if it is above 25 degrees I'm going to leave the minimum off so save here save and then that's going to turn off the 4CH so channel 4 and off and save and then save here and then warm enough so now we have set up two scenes and with these two scenes if the temperature gets below 25 degrees then the channel 4 of this 4CH is going to turn on there is no easy way to simulate this but it is early in the morning so I think I'm going to place this temperature sensor outside where it's probably still under 25 degrees and then hopefully we will see that this relay gets turned on okay so I didn't have to wait long it probably took a few minutes uh, so now the temperature has dropped below 25 degrees and you can see that channel 4 on the 4CH has turned on so you can use this example scene to set up the motion sensor and any son of device I mean it can be a son of basic or a or a son of a POW so it can control for example a heater or your furnace so it only turns on when the temperature drops below a certain value now I've moved the sensor back inside and I've also <laughs> held it in my hand uh, for a short while to warm it up a little bit more quickly and now it is showing 26.2 degrees and channel 4 on the 4CH has now turned off I could think about other scenarios how you can use this device uh, of course we have only seen how to use the temperature value to control something but just as easily you can use the uh, humidity value as well you can see that here on the action side you can specify temperature and humidity readings as well so you can do either or both of them so if uh, for a typical heating application you most probably use the temperature but if you want to control humidity for example in a greenhouse you can just use the humidity settings and it works exactly the same way as the temperature one so you can either specify an upper threshold or a lower threshold or you can actually use both of them and as I said on the action side you can control any son of device so if I add one you can see it on a smart device 
basically all my Sonos devices are available. So you can control any of them using the temperature and the humidity sensor. But I think that's all about the Zigbee temperature and the humidity sensor. If you are interested in this device, you can find the purchasing links in the video description. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.